Hello everyone, welcome back to my new fly career in Microsoft Flight Sim. It's been a little while since I've posted a video in this series and that is not because I wasn't flying the new fly career. It is because I made a serious mistake with the MU2, an embarrassing mistake, and decided to scramble my way back to where I was before, before posting another video. So I did a bunch of flights to make up for the mistake and now I can present the results and so we can move forward instead of just having a whole bunch of videos where I'm basically back with the Cessna 310. So anyway, I had previously made a mistake with the MU2, uh, crashing into a bunch of trees at the end of the runway. So I was already in a bit of financial trouble as I took off from Myanmar here, head down to Kuala Lumpur. This flight went fine. And so I was carrying mechanical parts. This was flown on July 16th and I was headed to WMKK. There's Kuala Lumpur right there. I'm flying over the city looking for the Petronas Towers and all that business and other sites. Now I'm sure the MU2 is a wonderful plane. It's just that for me it's cursed now. <laughs> I just, uh, my first crash was in it and that was with the heavy plane unable to clear a bunch of trees. And now what will happen here later in this next flight. Yeah. So anyway, but I mean it's a nice plane overall and very useful. I don't know if it was all that lucrative. Comparing the stuff I was able to get with it, the missions I was able to get with it, to the missions that I could get with the Cessna 310, honestly, uh, they, they weren't that different in value. So I don't know if it was that much better in that respect. But anyway, here I am landing at Kuala Lumpur, WMKK. And uh, this particular flight was just a timed one, I think. So nothing too special. And, well, I don't know. I'm trying to not be landing hard here. That was a harder landing than we like well, to see. Well, it was pilot. still a hard landing. I swear, the vertical speed indicator did not make that seem very Taxi to hard. Taxi and shut down your engine. They rated it differently, and then they give me two different feet per minute too on the Sky for Sim thing. Anyway, I parked, and that was that. So that went fine, and oddly enough, oh, okay, I decided to repark there. So that's that. Transport from dispatch. Okay, nice job. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. Alright, two hour and 16 minute flight there from VYME to YMKK. Thanks, and see you soon. And then the next flight is also a mechanical parts flight. Uh, so that is now going to Singapore, WSSS. Now that's a very short flight, but I wanted to go into Singapore. Um, I regret that now, uh, but uh, basically I thought it'd be nice to see Singapore with the MU2, so off I went to Singapore. And here we are taking off. Now I was flying this Transport. relatively late nice in the flight. day and making excuses now, and I, I was probably quite tired. Uh, don't fly when you're tired, especially when this stuff is on the line. Now, it's a silly mistake that I make at the end, and um, I could have been backing up my progression, but I did, hadn't backed up my progression. There is an option to back up your progression in Neofly. I decided not to use that because I feel like I should own my mistakes and you know suffer the consequences. Otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm posting a video. I mean, if if I don't suffer the consequences of my mistake, there's no tension, no suspense. I mean, there shouldn't really be suspense when you're flying planes, but uh, you get the picture, you know. If you do make a mistake, you should have to make up for it. So that's how I felt about it and how I still feel about it. And well, as a result, I'm making this video where I show you how I made up for it. So here's uh, the airport of Singapore, WSSS, and I scope it out and then come in for a landing. No problem here. So coming in off to the side a little bit though. That and hard. Ouch. That looks like it hurts. You can tell I, I, I from that I, I was not like fully Taxi awake. To park <laughs> I mean, and shut down your uh, yes, I was not in the best frame of mind to be flying. But the worst thing was when I was taxiing. I can I'm, I'm squirreling around this thing is a little bit hard to handle on taxiing in the first place, but I don't know why this happened. Don't ask me. Uh, uh, so I didn't have a particular parking spot. I tried to park here, but for some reason, uh, I didn't apply the brakes and throttle down well enough, and I smacked into the building. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, 
there we are. So that's how I ended up flying the Cessna 310 again. It's sad. It's really sad. But anyway, we'll get through it together. It'll be quick. So I've got another 11 flights in this video just so that we can get back to a better position. And don't worry, we won't be going back to the MU-2. I'll be teasing the possibility of me flying a DC-3 by the end of this. So you can have that to take with you. So, but the first flight is to WAHH to nice Java, to carrying old wine, and I had to land at less than 200 feet per minute. Now, this flight was done on July 20th, and that was actually the anniversary of the moon landing. I wish that day was the day off for everyone. Uh, it ought to be. In, in, a, in a just world, the day when we landed on the moon first should be a day off for everyone. But anyway, so off I went to Java. And it's a fairly long flight, but I wanted ones that are more lucrative after all. And there is Java in front of us. And there are some nice sights to see in Java. There are all these mountains to fly by. Volcanoes, I presume. But anyway, down to the situation at hand. I needed to land at less than 200 feet per minute because this is old wine and it would get jostled otherwise. So let's see how I do here. Again, I, I'm not entirely sure about how it reads nice it sometimes, landing, but it liked it that time. So I got full value, which is good because this was a long flight, and so that was a lot of money. And here I am, very carefully getting into the parking space, as you might expect after the great tragedy, of course. So yes, even doing it from inside the cockpit instead of outside. So they're shutting it all down. And Stand by, pilot. Cargo unloading. All right, so the old wine, it sounds like they're making a mess of it anyway, but got a lot of XP for that. The XP is going to become important because actually one way I'm going to get myself out of this is to get up in rank to captain, which will actually allow me to get larger loans. But anyway, the next flight is to WIKK Indonesia with more old wine. And Good once morning. again landing the at less than 200 feet per minute. As soon as you get in your aircraft we in just brought old wine here. I guess there's a wine trade going on and it's a different kind of wine dispatch. going up to WIKK and they're part of Indonesia. I don't know. I don't know the logic. I'm just carrying the wine here. So, all right. Here we go. And taking off. You can see the location there in the Sky for Sim map. Uh, it's an island, but of course all of Indonesia is a bunch of islands, but it's, uh, it's a smaller island than usual, nice takeoff, let's pilot. say. Certainly a, a smaller flight. island than Java. So off we go. On the way out there are still plenty of mountains to enjoy, and you can see I'm heading to one right now, but also making sure I'm climbing at a good rate to not smack into them. So yeah, just an array of mountains along Java here. And then finally I arrive at the location where I'm going to land. And here I am coming in for a landing. A little bit shaky here. And then I lost connection, <laughs> which uh, it seems to like to do when I'm trying to land. Uh, this will happen more than once during this video, me losing connection while I'm trying to land. Uh, so that threw me off a little bit. That's my excuse anyway. And so, uh, wobbly. I still think the vertical speed indicator did not show more than 200 feet per minute. That's why I was targeting. I was trying to be careful. But it read more than 200 there. And so I didn't get full value at all. That was a little bit sad. Guess I'll have to be even more gentle. And parking space right up against a building. Right. Be careful, but at least it's not the MU-2. The MU-2 just taxis crazy sometimes. All right, so there we are. That one done. Okay, pilot. Removing the fragile goods so two of the 11 recovery normal. missions down. And more old wine being offloaded. And then the next Transport. one is to Borneo. Another cargo mission completed. Thanks, and see you soon. And this one was on July 21st, so the two old wine ones were July 20th. And since it was in the middle of the Apollo 11 
anniversary, I decided to uh, do this while streaming, and we were listening to Apollo 11 in real time while I was streaming it, so sorry about that as an additional noise there. Or perhaps you don't consider the Apollo 11 audio to be noise at all, but we're sort of in the middle of it and it doesn't make much sense. I don't remember what I was carrying here, I didn't record that part, so yeah. I, I don't know what we were carrying to Borneo, but there's the Apollo 11 stuff in the corner for the audience dur during the Twitch live stream in commemoration of the anniversary. Most of the flight was just over water though, so that wasn't all that great. There was a lighthouse along the way that uh, we took a look at from from a reasonable height, but you know, I didn't swoop in to take a look at it. And here I am coming into a landing at WAGF on Borneo. Still on the Indonesian side. I have obviously never been here. Eek. Well, I landed. So it was definitely not one that required me to be less than 200 feet per minute at least. I think it was a timed one. So alright, I got my parking spot and then from WAGF I went to WIBB also in Indonesia. Eventually I will leave Indonesia. Uh, in fact after this flight I'll start aiming to get to India and going through Thailand, Myanmar and such. So anyway, first this flight to uh, that part of Indonesia. I don't, I, I guess Sumatra? I think that was Sumatra. And off we go. This time carrying vegetables and is a timed mission. The timed missions are the easiest ones that give you a lot of XP. Uh, unless you're good at landing soft. Transporter from of dispatch. Course. Fly safe. Alright. So this was actually July 28th, so there was a gap there. Took a little bit of time to get to this flight. And not much to see in particular, so here we are approaching the target. Um, which city the airport belongs to? It says Pekinbaru there, but I forget whether the airport is actually associated with that directly or if it's one of the other cities around. So that's why I don't name the cities, I'll just cite the airport because I don't know which one they're officially associated with and a lot of times these airports aren't one that belong to a big city. So. Here I am coming in. It was a little bit gusty. And I've got my landing lights. Okay. We have touchdown. Alright, not a bad touchdown as far as vertical speed, but all over the place on the lateral side, I guess we could say. Alright, parking nicely. And the vegetables were delivered. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Now, there was a big gap between that flight and the next one, and that was because I was doing the all-country tour with the F-111, so the next flight was from August 14th, and that was a big reason why I didn't get to upload this video earlier, otherwise I probably would have gotten to where I wanted to be uh, weeks ago. But I did do that all-country flight, and so that delayed my ability to do these Neofly flights. And the next flight is to VTSM in Thailand, it's an island and I was carrying fish on a timed mission, so don't need to land softly this time, but all these timed missions did require Good some flight. watching of the fuel situation because they were pretty heavy loads for this plane, really pushing it a little bit. There wasn't a whole lot of reserve. There was reserve, but there wasn't a whole lot. Had to fly fairly carefully to make sure that we weren't guzzling too much fuel. Not too much of a big deal though. And so here we are departing Indonesia. And it'll be a while before I come back to Indonesia I think. Interesting sight here as I was in this part of Indonesia. I couldn't tell where this was like an oil facility. You know th those were like all oil drills or something like that, or whether it's something else, could they all be homesteads all spaced out like that? When there's like cities around that have them all close together, I didn't think it was like that. It seemed to be some sort of facility, but it's huge, of course, it has a lot of units, whatever it is. And I was coming in with a lot of energy as we approached Samui Island there, uh, so I actually did S-turns to get rid of some of that energy. I think I might have done a loop as well. So that's what I'm doing here, and then finally approaching to land. This is what it looked like. 
And it's one of those airports with buildings right there. And, you know, at this point, I'm trying to be cautious, I swear. Here we come. No landing lights, though. I was forgetting the landing lights again. This is just a time one, so that I didn't have to be soft. I've seen. She didn't like it, but it was less than 200 feet per minute. The only time I land with more than 200 feet per minute is practically like the times when I'm not supposed to. Alright, so that's the parking. We are in Thailand. And the next Transporter. flight... Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. The next flight will also be to Thailand. And there's the official time, three hours for that flight. Uh, the next one will be to, you are clear to start your engine. VTBL in Thailand, up north, uh, past Bangkok. And I'll be carrying meat, and it'll be another time mission. And this was flown on August 16th. And here I have 227,000 in the bank right now. So things are looking up a little bit better. But there we have it. That's the flight there. And taking off from this particular island. Transporter, have a nice flight. All right. Looks very pleasant, actually. Looks like a place where people might visit, like almost a resort kind of thing, but that's just my impression. I don't know. Could imagine that. Nice island. And there were clouds over Bangkok, so I didn't actually get a uh, good sighting of it to include in the video, but this was just past Bangkok, and you can see the clouds behind me that were obscuring the view. Just got out of those, and here is the outskirts, I guess, of Bangkok. I think that's the airport there. And head on to VTBL, which was my destination. An occasional view out the window from the cockpit. And the airport was next to these mountains or hills, but thankfully they didn't actually get in the way from this approach. They're just sort of there, right next to it. And this hat looked coming in. But I wouldn't say it was too hard or anything. My view is a little bit off-center there. And... How will it be? Transporter from dispatch. Touchdown. Nice she landing. didn't complain. Go to she the even said it was a nice landing this time. On. I'll be in touch. Uh, wiggly though. Okay. Taxi to parking so, and shut down your engine. After that, I went on to Myanmar. Here's the parking. Yes. Parking a big menace now. I mean <laughs> Got to make sure that works out properly. Transporter. There's a flight time Cargo log there. In progress. Stand by, pilot. At this point, I had enough money to repay the smaller loan, the 150000 one, or at least it was 150000 when I got it. Uh, I chose to do that because of a higher interest rate. And so, otherwise, I could have saved up and paid the bigger one. But I'll do that by the end of this video. So the next one, the next flight was VYPY in Myanmar, carrying four passengers. It's been a while since I carried passengers, and I guess mainly because they're not always so lucrative, but they were lucrative this time. Though maybe not the best for XP though, because there wasn't any time requirement, there's no landing softly requirement, it's just carrying four passengers, and Pilot. they don't seem to complain nice much. Flight. So, yeah. In terms of getting myself closer to captain rank, it might not have been the best thing, but it was probably the right price, at least. The field in Myanmar was not that long. It was a 4,400 foot runway, I think. So that was a downside, but this plane can certainly do it. This is not the MU-2 or anything. So here I am cruising around Thailand, enjoying the sights. I'll, after this video, get back to just doing two flights per video and then we can talk more about the locations that I'm flying over instead of just sort of glossing over all these things. It'll take it a little bit easier, but for this video I'm glossing over everything and not taking a close look at all the details. As here is that 4,400 foot runway without markings 
here in Myanmar uh, to land at and well they, 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 they didn't have any requirements about how softly I should land so I just wanted to make Ouch. sure that I that stopped like before the end of the runway Ooh, a little bit wiggly as I try to make sure of that and in flight sims peculiar way we have an F-22 here and a bunch of Broncos so I parked next to one of the OV-10 Broncos and there we have it. Transporter. Disembarkation in progress. Stand by. Transporter from dispatch. Everyone is on the bus. Check that they haven't forgotten anything. Have a nice day. So, on August 18th, I decided to finally go into India carrying fruit to VEIM. And so that was the job. And it was a time-based one, so I had to get there quickly. I make sure to add the fuel there and make sure that my masses are correct even before I fly. Also, I do fly in real time with real world weather. Uh, because the F-111 flights weren't always in real time and sometimes I turned off real world weather to see things, it keeps messing with that. So I always have to make sure of that before flying each time here. Pilot, but, fly like the wind. Anyway, that, those are the current rules. And here I am flying through Myanmar taking a big loop from the airfield and on to the location in India. Nice calm view there. But there were some troubling clouds over here. And in fact, by the time I got to the airport, uh, they were getting rather serious. And in fact, ATC denied me the ability to land because I was not IFR. And my response to that was, screw it, we we're going to enable weather ignoring and go ahead with it and I take the risk. This might not have been the best idea, but, but I had some confidence that I could manage it with the tools I had available. In particular, the map that actually is part of NeoFly, the NeoFly app, is not too bad as far as showing me the airport. Visibility here, not so good. And actually, this is a fairly high altitude airport. It's got a long runway. It's a reasonably sized runway, but it is not close to sea level, so that's another little rub here. I do fly past the airport and try to get my sense of the area <laughs> not that I can see much but there are mountains around it so this airport is basically surrounded by mountains the beeping right now is just telling me that I'm close to the ground without my gear out I think because speed wise I'm okay I'm not stalling and uh, I'm also not too fast for the flaps so I'm pretty sure it's just a get your gear down you're close to terrain beep there and I just sort of wanted to see the airport first. And let's see. You can sort of see the terrain there. This is this is not advisable to do in real life, mind you. But there we go. Nice lights they have there. Very handy. Definitely useful. And they decided to cut my connection and block my view of the runway right there, as usual. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why it happens like that. It, it's always right when I'm trying to land, too. It's strange. Okay, but like I said, it's a long runway, so I didn't feel pressed to set down quickly. I took my time with it considering the weather. Still, it's probably harder than I'd like to be. That wasn't the softest landing I've no, seen. No, not that hard, actually, honestly. It'd still work with the 200 feet per minute thing, so... That's the only standard I've got, really, except for her chastising me. Okay, so, parking. And the rather bad weather here. And the fruit has been delivered. There we go. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Okay, so with that, three more flights. The next one was to VAJA, 
and that one a little bit further in basically flying over Bangladesh and into I guess you could say the main part of India I don't know but anyway flying over Bangladesh transporter from dispatch close I to Calcutta there fragile cargo mission yeah I asked for a fragile cargo mission and we know I'm probably gonna regret that the weather is pretty bad over here but I had reason to believe the weather would be better on the opposite side of Bangladesh so there was that Taking off from here was a little bit tricky. Transporter from dispatch. Fly safe and remember to watch your landing. Yeah, uh, that 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 is the stall warning. Yeah. Yep, stall. Uh, managed it, and there was clouds all the way up to basically 10,000 feet. So that was quite a lot of clouds. As I climbed up here, I did try to get above them. And eventually there were clear spots as I approached Bangladesh and overall it got clearer as I went in further into India. So VAJA carrying phones and needing to land at less than 200 feet per minute. Nice little scoping out of the area as I came around to approach the airport in a more beneficial direction, but I didn't really line up very well. And so I was high and didn't have the landing lights and really landed far into it. Ouch. And that wasn't soft. Okay, yeah. That wasn't the softest landing I've seen. Definitely not good. But anyway, still probably got decent XP out of it. Though not as much money as I wanted. So here at VAJA, parked, I mean, phones, well, phones are important. Transport from dispatch. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. Two hour flight there. That was the second flight on the 18th. And then I flew to VIAH on August 19th. And this was basically close to New Delhi. These are all fairly small airports, but this one was on the outskirts of Calcutta or close to Calcutta and the uh, VA, VIAH, that airstrip is really close to New Delhi. So I wish I was going to the main airports, but here we are. And this was carrying meat and it was a time-based one instead of uh, feet per minute based one. And off I went, basically at dawn. Pilot, fly like the wind. Well, another stall there. I, I, that shouldn't be a speed that we were stalling at, but anyway. Uh, a little bit dark here, but it will be lighter by the time we get to our destination. And we're crossing basically the northern part of India here. Nice moon in the background. Foolish moon there. And by the time the sun rose, it was quite majestic, as you can see. I do like this Cessna 310. I trust it very much. It's a nice plane to fly. There's the Milvis one or the Blackbird Sim one. But we do have to move on from it. It has saved us. But we need to get on to bigger things. So here I am approaching VIAH. And this one I think was just one where I got to announce. So I selected a runway for landing and then headed in. Not particularly good scenery around the airport, but maybe that's for the best. Less distracting. And coming in. Transporter from dispatch. And nice landing. Relatively soft landing when it pre-gone. doesn't count, of course. I'll be in touch. Or when it doesn't matter. All right, and so with that, Contact we're on to the final flight that contribute to my grand comeback from the MU2 demise. But while I was trying to park here, it said missing payload on the Sky for Sim thing, and that made me very worried. I was not happy with the idea of it trying to deny me success here uh, when I was intending to finally climb back to where I was supposed to be, but it did say that the payload was there in the Sky for Sim thing when I went to the, the Neofly dialogue. Cargo unloading. 
And it turned out to be all right. I don't know why it said missing payload from while I was taxiing. Seems okay. It also the said something about taxi happy. speed when I wasn't going Mission that fast ended. at all. So, all of a sudden some weird things. And there we go. I'm really close to getting the captain rank. And we have 304,000 there. There I've got 9,772 experience out of 10,000. And even though it says like 20, 25 XP, they give you a lot more than that. There's a multiplier and other factors. So anyway, I added the mission to VIST, which is carrying fuel. And that was one that required a certain vertical speed, less than 200 feet per minute. So yeah, well, anyway, that's not going to happen because whenever I try those, I fail. But uh, even though on the other flights, I do very well on it, but some, some mental block or something. Anyway, so off we go out from VIAH. VIST is Good not that far away. Softly. Basically halfway through the previous flight, just going back, just going eastward again. And you can see the area around the airport had especially bad textures on the ground and mostly the textures for India were better than that. But yeah, we just got a blurry patch at VIAH for some reason. And I'll go sort of close to Varanasi there. At least it looked like it from the map. But the problem with the Sky for Sim map is it renders the name of the towns really huge. Sometimes I don't even know which dot corresponds to which. Uh, in this case it's pretty clear. But there's no way I'm pronouncing that location. So here we are coming in. And finally, finally I clawed my way back. Along the way, I had been paying back some of the loans because every week 10% is due. So the loan amount for the $500,000 loan is now down to $300,000. And at the end of this, I will be able to pay that off. And then not only will I be able to pay that off, but I'll also be able to take one of the larger loans, a million dollar or five million dollar one even, because of my captain rank. And that will enable me to get uh, playing even better than the MU2. Much better. So here I am sitting down. The only thing is, I'm eyeing the DC-3, and that's because it's actually available at this airport. But I'm a little bit nervous about tail draggers. Uh, I swear it wasn't that hard. Was it that, that hard? It did not seem like, it did not seem like that hard a landing. I was pissed. And yeah. Anyway, we just have a little turnaround area here and a side park here and end it. So there you have it. The Transporter. stint with the Cessna 310 to by, recover pilot. my funds. And, and now we can proceed. The cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. We can proceed with bigger and better things. So, uh, yes, I got the captain rank. Let's get out of here. And then in the finances, I repaid the only other loan I had, that one. And so that's done with, I could take another 500,000 loan, but that won't be enough to get something really big. Uh, it does leave me with only 18,000, but right now I'm only paying for the rental fee on the Cessna 310. So yeah, there are three DC-3s at this airport. So that's special. <laughs> and they cost about 800,000 to 900,000 for the deposit in order to get them. And then of course you have to pay the other fees, but it's probably worth it. But I'm just a little bit nervous about tail draggers, but the DC-3 is like the easiest among tail draggers to deal with, so there's that. So probably, probably I would think that everybody would want me to try to fly the DC-3 and do a proper airliner like that of some kind. There wasn't really a whole lot else around. DC-6 is a possibility though. Um, they're like 3 million, or uh, 2 to 3 million, depending on whether you want the A or B. The Bs are more expensive because they do passengers as well. Uh, but technically, I can get the $5 million loan. So I could do a DC-6 even. But that's a bit of a stretch. That's also a big, bit of a jump. I think there should be more continuity between planes, and I should uh, go up steadily. But technically, I have certification for the DC-6 as well. Anyway, with those being my plans, and thoughts. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.